so today we're going to be doing rounding and estimating decimals. And rounding is looking at a certain place value, position, and deciding whether you're going to stay the same or go up. And estimating is really taking a look at the whole and, and, and estimating what you're going to do. And we use a lot of estimating in real life whenever we go into... The volume is turned off. Is all right. When we go into um, McDonald's and we have $10 to spend, we look at the menu and we kind of estimate those amounts to make sure that we have enough money. So when you're rounding or estimating, you need to use the place value chart to determine the value of each decimal number. And so remember, here is the decimal point, and here is, this is less than a dollar, and this is more than a dollar. And so this is like one dollar, ten, hundred, thousand, and this is tenths, like in ten cents, tenths, hundredths is in the pennies, and then thousands, which we don't think of as in money, and ten thousandths, but you need to know all of those place values. And so to put these numbers in here, like this, it, you say it two and eight tenths. So it's two, two dollars and eight tenths, and then it would, in money, it'd be 80 cents. So take out your note sheet, and you're going to write this, and go ahead and pause it whenever you need time to um, write. And, and then keep going until you have it all. So in the top, you're going to write locate and underline the rounding place. Locate and underline the rounding place. It's going to tell you in the problem what the rounding place is. So if it says round to the nearest tenth, you're going to underline the tenths place. The next step is to circle the digit to the right of the rounding place. So if you're rounding to the nearest tenth, you would underline the tenth here, and then you would circle the hundredth to the right. And then fill in these boxes. You ask, is the circled number greater than or equal to five? Or is it less than five? The circled number, the hundredths place. So an example of this and we said round to the nearest tenth. So we would underline the tenth and circle the eight. And then we say, is it greater than or equal to 5? So 8 is greater than or equal to 5. If it's greater than, we increase the rounding place by 1. So the rounding place is the underlined one. So this would become 3, and increase 6 by 1, it would become 3 and 7 tenths. If it's less than 5, the rounding place stays the same. And then finally, all digits to the left of the rounding place stay the same. So to the left, stay the same, and all the digits to the right change to 0. So if you were looking at this, you'd go 68, and then you know that that rounds to 70, and that's 70 there. So go ahead and pause if you need to, and um, fill in the rest of your sheet. And we're going to do a little bit of practice. So we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So since, it, since all of these are the same in the nearest tenth, let's go ahead and underline our tenths place. And 
and then the next step would be to circle our the, the next place to the right, which is the hundredths place. So six says that that goes up. Since that's nine, that has to go up. So it would go to 100. And four, this four says to this four, stay the same. So it would go to 40 because these become zero. And this one, the three, the two says to three, stay the same. So it stays the same. And this 9 tells this 9 to go up. 9 can only go up if that goes up. So it's, and if you look at this as many, $6.99, what are you going to say that is? You're going to say that that's $7. So do these other two by yourself. Now it's going to tell you to round to the decimal to indicate a place value. So on hundredths, you're going to underline the hundredth and look to that. Ones, you're going to underline the one and look to that. Tens is all the way over here. You're going to underline that and look to that. And thousandths, you're going to underline the thousandths and look to that. And hundredths, you're going to underline the hundredths and look to that. And ten thousandths, I have to always go back and refresh what it is. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So it's this, look at that. So go ahead and make those, those changes and round those decimals and um, we'll come back to the answers. to E and F. And of course you can add the zeros, but the zeros don't make a difference. You just want to make sure that there's no number in the place value past what you're being asked for. So tenths, so there's no number other than zero past tenths. And then here are the answers for the, um, these. So now, you're going to find these a lot in word problems. And like I said, in everyday life, um, deciding what you're going to do. So on average, U.S. farmers received 188 thousandths of a cent for each pound of peanuts they produced in 2003. To the nearest cent, cent means round to hundredth. How much did farmers receive for each pound of peanuts? So if they have point one eighty eight cents would be this one. That's the nearest cent. Look to this one. So eight's gonna make eight go to nine. So nineteen cents. That's cents. Nineteen cents. So um, do this one. And do this one. Um, nearest meter, this is going to be the nearest meter. So this is going to be 26 cents. And so the 5, look at the 7. 7 says 5 go up, so 26 cents. And this, the 4 says to the 3, stay the same. So 3 stays the same, 3 meters. Okay. So um, Julia works at a grocery store a few hours each week. The table shows the number of hours she worked in four months. What is the closest to the total number of hours Julia worked? So we're going to um, estimate these. And this is a little different. We're, we're going to kind of round, but to a number that's closest to all of them. And if, if I look at these, they're all close to 70. So this is close to 70. This is close to 70. This is close to 70. And this is close to 70. 
This is a little bit above 70, below 70, below 70, above 70. So 70 times 4 would be 280 hours. And if you look at those, that's the one that's most reasonable. So go ahead and do this one. The table shows the number of miles Jamie ran last week. Estimate the total number of miles he ran last week. So um, estimate those and come up with a number. So you can see this is a little bit more than five, a little bit more than five, a little less than five, exactly five. So you can say about five each day and five times four is 20. Okay, so now we're gonna look at estimating. And this is really comes into play whenever you're looking at money. Um, if you were to estimate $34.60 and $55.30, and, and, and um, you could go to the nearest dollar or to the nearest $10. So to the nearest dollar would be looking at this. And so 6 would make the 4 go up to 35. And 3 would make the 55 stay the same. So 55 plus 35 is 90, okay? If we wanted to do to the nearest dollar, that's to the nearest dollar. If we wanted to do to the nearest $10, that would go to 30, and that would go to 60. So guess what? Our estimates are the same whether we went to the nearest $10 or the nearest dollar. It'll usually tell you the nearest dollar or the nearest five dollars, five ten dollars. Um, I'm going to do this to the nearest ten dollars because it's just easier. And so this would be twenty minus this would round to ten, so that equals ten. So this is a great way to mentally do your math. So go ahead and you can round these to the nearest dollar or to the nearest ten dollars, um, and round this to the nearest $10 and the nearest $100, and you'll come up with um, your answers. So if you did it to the nearest dollar, you'd get $26. If you did it to the nearest $10, you'd get 30, which 26 and 30 are still pretty close together. If you do to the nearest $10 on this one, you get 310. If you do it to the nearest $100, you get 300. So a lot of easy math going on. Like I said, you should be able to do these in your head because these are the kinds of decisions you make whenever you go out to buy something. There is no one correct answer when estimating. To estimate means to find an approximate value. However, reasonableness is important. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to your signs. If you added these, you'd get a much bigger number than what the answer is. So, and, and, and these two, you have to make sure that you're subtracting and not adding. which items can be purchased for about $5. You could do any combination. Um, maybe you'd want to do um, soda and candy or cookies and soda. Um, you wouldn't be able to do cookies and candy. You'd go over. So think about what you could buy without going over what combinations. Tomorrow, whenever you discuss this in class, discuss when it might be appropriate to round up. Um, when do you want to make sure? Okay. Turn your note sheet over and do the problems on the other side, but just the evens. 2 through 56, even only.